Hey everybody, I'm Tiago. I manufacture metal framing for commercial projects and residential projects alike. Today I'm going to talk about multi-story buildings or mid-rise buildings and how you can build them 100% out of steel framing. I'm going to talk about engineering, exterior wall sizing, floor systems, and wall assemblies. I'm going to be discussing leg gauge steel, LGS, and how it's a cost-effective solution to build mid-rise buildings. So first, why would we build with metal? The first example is metal versus wood. You know, when compared with wood framing, developers choose steel because it offers better insurance rates, buildings are easier to refurbish and maintain, so you're getting a longer life cycle out of the building. When you're comparing it with concrete or CMU blocks, it's typically more cost-effective while offering the same levels of longevity. Cost effectiveness ranges from the skill required to put it up. You can use lower skilled people to do framing and also the building weight. Um, like H steel buildings are a lot lighter than concrete or CMU buildings. So the foundation can have a lot less concrete in it. So you're saving on the foundation and you're saving on labor. The biggest component of a 100% like H steel building are the exterior load bearing walls. These are what you're gonna spend the most money on and they're gonna to have to be structural. Properly sizing them is very important. Typically they consist of six inch studs with gauge varying depending on the floor. Stud sizing is the responsibility of your structural engineer. The stud gauge and plan sizes typically decrease as you go up each floor. In a four story building, you might have six inch studs with 16 on center framing you expect the first floor to use 14 gauge, the second floor to use 16 gauge, and the third floor to use 16 gauge, and the top floor to use 18 gauge. Here are some examples of wall schedules. In this case, they're using eight inch studs instead of six inch. They're also varying the stud flange from floor to floor, and they're using a 16 gauge on the first floor, 18 on the second, third, and fourth floor. Here is a taller building where they're doing something similar. This is an eight floor, floor building. And in this case, they are starting out with um, a 14 gauge stud on the first floor with a three and a half inch flange. And they're decreasing to 16 gauge when they move up a floor and then they're decreasing the flange size all the way down to a six, six inch stud with a two inch flange. In mid-rise buildings also there is low bearing walls, not only in the exterior, but also in the interior. On either typically the demising walls or the corridor walls. So the demising walls, the walls between the hotel rooms, the corridor walls between the hotel rooms and the corridor. This is to hold the, the lengths of the studs and joists. Optimization occurs when you use the shortest span for your joists or floor trusses. Here is a cross-sectional view. And in this cross-sectional view, you can see the, um, the corridor walls are load-bearing. Here's some example of connection details when you're uh, building, building with metal framing. You need to, uh, this is what a typical connection engineering detail might look like for your load-bearing walls. Now, so we've covered interior load-bearing walls and exterior load-bearing walls. There's a third type of wall that builders use. It's going to be the interior non-load-bearing walls. These walls are typically made of 20 gauge EQ studs. The metal, the metal is typically 33 mils to 18 mils or 24 gauge to 26 gauge. These walls are a lot thinner, easier to work with and are significantly cheaper than the structural counterparts. A typical size for them is three and five eighths for a regular wall and six inches for a wall that you need to run plumbing pipes through. Interior studs will be a lot less of the construction budget and the labor is a lot cheaper. When you're designing your interior walls, you must size for STC ratings. That's the sound penetration between walls and UL fire ratings. Below is an example of a non-load bearing partition designed with an STC rating of 55 and a one hour fire rating. The elements they use to reduce the sound penetration are double layers of uh, 5 8 drywall and sound attenuation bats. That's a type of insulation. Below is another example of a wall, an interior wall, with a one hour fire rating and an STC rating of 58. 
They achieved this by using mineral wool insulation, resilient channel on one side, and a double layer of drywall on the other side. There's another way that you can reduce sound transmission between walls, and that's also with soundproofing sheets. Now, the floor system. This is the, the floors, so you want to build your floors out of metal studs too. For a 100% light gauge system, there are two ways to construct floors, joists or flat trusses. Often both methods are used together. Trusses are better for longer spans. When using trusses, you can also avoid the need for a drop ceiling to accommodate air ducts and other mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. However, many hotel developers choose to have individual AC units in rooms, which allows them to bypass the need for larger MEP openings. This in turn enables builders to install joists instead of trusses in some cases. So we talked about trusses. The second common type of floor system is joists. These are cost effective and generally easier to work with. Joists have a shorter profile, typically measuring from six to 12 inches. Joists are used in conjunction with a drop ceiling sometimes. In addition, a typical apartment or bathroom unit, a drop ceiling is installed in the kitchen and the bathroom to accommodate air ducts while a higher ceiling is just used in the regular room. There are ways to reduce sound transmission on your floor systems. You can also um, use uh, sound dampening things as well. USG outlines a building plan where you can use sound transmission between floors. Typically, they're going to have a desired floor system that's, uh, you know, like a wood floor or a laminate floor. You're going to have three fourths inch plywood, a one fourth inch sound mat, and then your metal C joists. And then you might drop it a little bit and put in uh, fiberglass insulation or resilient channel. And then you're going to put drywall on the next ceiling. Now your roofs are uh, they're pretty similar to the floors but they're they're a little more complicated this is a typical um, side view of it typically the roofs are flat you want them to be flat so you can put your uh, HVAC units on the roof uh, roof might have a, one layer of a waterproof membrane a second layer of plywood or gypsum fiberboard and then an insulation panel as a third layer a fourth layer you might put another uh, gypsum fiberboard and then you might put steel decking and then you're going to put your joists or your flat trusses. This is a brief overview on how to build 100% uh, with light gauge steel. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.